So this was all about the shift registers. Counters. Counters are the circuits which basically used to count clock pulses applied to it. Means the clock pulses will be counted by the counter. One more use uh, where counters are frequently used uh, as a frequency divider. Counters can also be used as a frequency divider. It will divide the frequency of the input clock pulse. Also, it is used to generate waveforms. If you want to generate a waveform of a, a particular a period or a particular duty cycle can be generated using counters counter is basically cascaded flip-flops which will have a clock pulse applied here and these clock pulses will be counted counter if we have suppose four flip flops used then the count will start from 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 means total there will be 16 counts so for four flip flops there can be maximum 2 raised to power 4 equal to 16 counts if there are n number of flip flops then the maximum count will be 2 raised to power n 2 raised to power n can be maximum found for this counter. For example, if there are 4 flip flops, 16 counts, this flip flop will be called as mod 16 or modulo 16 counter. Means the number of counting states will be mod number for this flip flop. If there are n number of counts then this flip flop will be called as mod n flip flop this flip flop will be called as mod n flip flop and if this is the frequency f for this clock pulse the counter will generate a waveform at the output which has a frequency f by n where this counter is mod n Counter. So a modern counter will divide the frequency of input clock pulse by its mod number. If it has mod number n, capital N, it will divide the frequency of clock by capital N. Now we will start uh, discussing about the counters. First we will see the two basic types of counters. First is asynchronous. And another one is synchronous counter. In synchronous counter, if there are four flip flops, all the flip flops. are applied with same clock means same clock pulse will be applied it uh, will be applied to all the flip flops as we have already seen in shift registers all the flip flops were given the same clock but in asynchronous counter different flip flops will be applied with different clock 
when separate clock pulses will be there for all the flip flops. Second, in asynchronous counter, only up and down sequence are possible. Means a flip flop can uh, count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or from 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Only these two sequences are possible. Why? Synchronous counter can count any counting sequence. If we want 5 after 2, we want the sequence 1, 2, 5, 0, 3, 4. Uh, this sequence is also possible using synchronous counter. So any counting sequence is possible. This counter can count in any, any counting sequence. These asynchronous counter are slower as compared to synchronous counters. Since these synchronous counters are faster in operation. And example for asynchronous counter is a ripple counter. Example for synchronous counter is a ring counter. Johnson's counter I counter Johnson's counter these are the examples for synchronous counter now we'll see first the asynchronous counter Ripple counter. In the ripple counter, uh, we know that all the flip flops are applied with the different clock pulses. We'll see the operation of a ripple counter. We know that this ripple counter, asynchronous counter can count in up and down sequence and remember one thing that if a counter is designed to count in up and down sequence, JK or T flip flop will be mandatory and should be operated in toggle mode means always if jk flip flop is used j and k both should be equal to 1 if t flip flop is used t should be equal to 1 so if up and down sequences are required a flip flop must be operated in toggle mode uh, we know that there are only two flip flops uh, one is jk and t flip flop which can be used in toggle modes now we'll see three bit ripple counter. Here we will use JK flip flop J0, K0, Q0, Q0 bar, J1, K1, Q1, Q1 bar. J2, K2, Q2, Q2 bar. All the flip flops will have their input at logic 1. Means whenever the flip flop will be triggered, it will toggle its output. Its output will be toggled. Now the first flip flop is applied with the clock. The 
sign at the clock shown that the flip flop is negative age triggered flip flop and this output will be given as clock to the next flip flop and this way we have designed this a 3 bit triple counter now remember one thing by seeing the design we can determine whether it is up counter or down counter there are uh, some fixed connections first for negative as triggered negative for negative as triggering if q is applied as a clock to the next flip flop for negative as triggering if q is applied as a clock to the next flip flop necessarily or surely it will be it will be a up counter second case if q bar is applied as a clock suppose we have applied this as a clock in this case the counter will be down counter means it will count in the down sequence second for positive age triggering if flip flops are designed for positive age triggering then there will be two cases if q is applied as a clock then it will count in down sequence not in up, up, up sequence because triggering is changed and if q bar is applied as a clock it will count in up sequence so these four possible triggering are there if negative as triggering is used q must be applied as a clock in order to obtain up sequence counting and q must be q bar must be applied as a clock in, in order to obtain uh, down sequence counting in the given figure we have negative as triggered flip flop and q as a clock to the other flip flops so this counter is an up counter so now i will say we have an up counter in the figure we have a three bit up counter in the figure now in this 3 bit up counter, we will see its operation. One by one we will apply the clock pulse and we will see the output of each flip flop. Simultaneously we will draw the waveform of a waveform at the output of these flip flops. Sorry, the flip flops are designed for negative edge triggering, so we will look for negative edge of the clock. So, now we will start the operation. Uh, see, this first flip flop is applied directly with the clock. So, whenever clock has its negative edge, this flip flop uh, will be triggered. And if this flip flop will be triggered, this Q0 will change from, uh, sorry, Q0 will toggle because J and K input both are 1. So, I will say Q0 toggles for every clock pulse. 
every clock pulse means for every negative edge q1 q0 will be toggled second thing is that q1 will be toggled whenever it is triggered but it will be triggered only if this clock one uh, clock to this flip flop or q0 changes from 1 to 0 or q1 toggles when q0 changes from 1 to 0 1 to 0 means negative edge say in this way negative edge similarly q2 toggles when q1 changes from 1 to 0 that is negative edge so the whole operation of this circuit will be based on these three points now initially we have all the flip flop in reset mode now start applying the clock at the first clock pulse means first negative edge this first flip flop will be triggered and its output q0 will change from 0 to 1 yes this has changed from 0 to 1 now remember one thing don't try to arrange the input of the next flip flops until the first flip flop has completed its operation because in this flip flop second flip flop will be triggered only if uh, the first flip flop has completed its operation so first flip flop output just now has changed from uh, 0 to 1 q0 has changed from 0 to 1 means positive edge is there positive edge is there for positive edge next flip flop will not be triggered if next flip flop is not triggered then we will say that the next flip flop output will remain in previous state because clock is not applied or we will say the next flip flop is not triggered so first at the first clock pulse q0 will be q will be 1 now the next clock pulse next negative edge at the next negative edge when second clock pulse is applied we know that q0 toggles for every clock pulse again q0 will change from 1 to 0 at the second clock pulse when q0 changes from 1 to 0 there is negative edge of q0 which is clocked to the next flip flop means there is negative edge of the clock if there is negative edge of the clock this q1 output will toggle if it is 0 it will become 1 because j and k input are logic 1 so this output will become 1 and this is 0 and just now q1 has changed from 0 to 1 0 to 1 change means there is no negative edge there is positive edge so next flip flop will not be toggled now the third clock pulse third clock pulse we know that q0 toggles for every clock pulse it will be again uh, changed from uh, 0 to 1 if it is changed from 0 to 1 there is positive edge for positive edge this flip flop will not be toggled and its output will be in previous state while the third flip flop will have its output in the previous state so, now uh, fourth clock pulse will be applied at the fourth clock pulse again q0 will toggle it will be changed from 1 to 0 if q0 changes from 1 to 0 there is negative edge for this negative edge q1 will also toggle if q1 changes from 1 to 0 there is negative edge so first time 
this last flip flop is triggered is triggered and when this flip flop is triggered its output will change from 0 to 1 so this was changed just now from 1 to 0 this was changed from 1 to 0 and this changed from 1 0 to 1 in this way the flip flop will change its state as so finally at the end of seven clock pulse the data will become one 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 four five six seven Uh, this will be the uh, waveform for the output. Now, if we apply 8 clock pulse, we will see how the counter resets. At the 8 clock pulse, we know that Q0 tokens for every clock pulse, so it will change from 1 to 0. There is negative edge. This output will also change from 1 to 0. There is negative edge, so next output will also change from 1 to 0. So all the output simultaneously becomes 0, 0, 0. So after 7th clock pulse, next clock pulse will reset the counter. There are 10 different, sorry, 8 different count. So this counter is called as mod 8 counter. This 3 bit up counter is also called as mod 8 counter. Mod 8 counter. Now, this is the one time period T clock for the clock pulse. This is the time period for uh, Q0, which is double to T clock. So, this is 2 into T clock. This is the time period for Q1, which is 4 times T clock. And uh, this will be the time period for Q2. This will be 8 into T clock. So at this level, the frequency will be divided by 2. Frequency of clock, if frequency of clock is F, at this level, the frequency will be divided by 2. Because time, time period is doubled, frequency will be half. At this level, the frequency will be divided by 4 and at this level, the frequency will be divided by 8. And earlier, we have discussed, discussed that a counter can be used as a frequency divider which will divide the frequency at the input. Means the frequency of the clock will be divided by the more the number of the counter. Now we'll see the uh, time period of clock. Thus, that must be uh, maintained in order to get the proper operation of this ripple counter. Uh, we had three flip flops. Clock was applied to the first flip flop, which has time period T clock. This was the clock signal. At this negative edge, first flip flop was triggered. First flip flop was triggered. And its output was clocked to the next flip flop. If this flip flop has a time propagation delay of TPD, means the clock will be applied to the next flip flop only after the time TPD. So we will have to wait at least a time TPD for uh, before applying this 
next clock calls. So this the after TPD time, this flip flop will be triggered again. This flip flop will take at least TPD time to generate its output, and this output will be again applied to the uh, as a clock to the next flip flop. <coughs> now this flip flop will again take TPD time to generate its final output. Means three flip flop will take separate TPD times. To generate their output means when the first flip flop was triggered, it will take TPD. Next flip flop will take TPD, and the last flip flop will also take TPD to generate its output. Means all the three flip flops will generate their output uh, after one TPD time. This flip flop takes TPD, but this flip flop gets input after TPD, and it generates. Its output after one TPD more time. So this flip flop will get input after two TPD and plus will add one TPD to generate its output. Means three TPD time are required at least to generate one single output by this ripple counter. If this flip flop is triggered at this instant, next triggering point should have a uh, time difference means this is a clock period this clock period should be at least a 3 tpd otherwise it will not operate in the proper manner so for a ripple counter with n flip flop t clock should be a greater than equal to n n into tpd so clock frequency should be less than equal to 1 by n into TPD. This is the condition required for frequency of the clock pulse. Frequency of the clock pulse uh, has limit. So this condition must be satisfied for proper operation in a, a ripple counter. Now, if you want to design a down counter, the design will be very simple. If you have these negative edge triggered flip flops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. These are, this is not a synchronous counter. If we have applied clock to the first flip flop, J0, K0 equal to 1, Q0, Q0 bar, J1, K1 again at logic 1, J2, K2 again at logic 1, K, Q1, Q1 bar, Q2. Q2 bar. Now uh, we will apply this Q0 bar as an input to the next flip flop, as a clock to the next flip flop. In this way, this design has negative edge triggering plus Q bar as a clock. If Q bar is applied as a clock, it will be a down counter you can verify its operation it will work in the uh, down sequence so it will be a down counter 